Hey guys, Mead Ronald Chris Tomer here on this Sunday. All right, my first stop is up in BC. So this is Revelstoke. Remember, we've got a split flow. So there's a lot of energy going up into BC, Pacific Northwest, and this is part of it. And they got some great snow in the last 24 hours. Uh, 24 cm, so looking at about uh, 10 inches. And that puts them at 37 cm for the last 48 hours. And the Gnome Cam, completely buried in snow up there. And it will continue today. It will continue to snow up there, and then it will start to dry out. But uh, a really good stretch up there in uh, parts of interior BC and also the coastal range. All right, the other part of the split flow is down here. This is, the, uh, this is actually Wolf Creek in southern Colorado. It is snowing this morning down there. I'm expecting several inches of accumulation. Snowing through parts of New Mexico as well. So you've got the northern track and the southern track as far as the, the split flow goes. In fact, here's radar. Um, there's your trajectory up to the north. So Washington State, Coastal Range, Interior BC, Northern Idaho, Northwest Montana, seeing the benefits of uh, that flow. Here's the other part of it, the southern track. So New Mexico, Colorado, seeing snow. So the low is somewhere right in here. The track will take it up through this area. So it is a it is a hook track, and so that puts good snow over southern Colorado, the San Gris de Cristos, Taos, Ski Santa Fe, Angel Fire. And as it moves in that direction, it will lay snow all the way down up towards the I-70 corridor in the Front Range High Peaks Loveland, A Basin, Breck, Keystone, Winter Park, Monarch will get snow out of this um, as well. So that's what's happening today. That's a today event for New Mexico in Colorado. Here is, yeah, this is water vapor satellite imagery, so the sort of the big picture here across the west. There's our low spinning there, and there's the other trajectory with the split flow up into the Pacific Northwest and BC. So where you see the whites, the blues, that's going to be your moisture in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. My bullet points. Here's what I'm seeing. Got the split flow through tomorrow. We've got the storm system hitting New Mexico, Colorado today, along with the Pacific Northwest and BC. Now, this is really interesting, watching this very carefully. Things definitely turn more active across the West after Thanksgiving. And it does, it's looking more and more like we're going to get an Arctic blast. Guys, this is exactly what we need. We need much colder air to come into the West because it's been a struggle with warm temperatures at many of the base areas. I mean, you've seen this in Wyoming and elsewhere. It's been tough. Um, and, and so this may come in just after Thanksgiving. Here are the best odds of accumulating snow. Colorado, Tahoe, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, and Interior, BC. So for example, in Colorado, light to moderate accumulations today, a teeny tiny bit tomorrow, and I'll show you that on the forecast radar. And then your heaviest is going to be 1229 through the morning of 121 in the mountains, along with much colder air. Utah, man, it's been a tough stretch. It's going to be a waiting game. Going to have to wait probably another six days to 1129 and 1130. That's the Arctic front. Now, that should bring moderate to heavy accumulations. Um, so that's on the way. We talked about interior BC. The heavy snow continues today, and then it's light for a little while. Maybe moderate there through 27 and 28. Okay, here's the forecast radar. So we'll start this up today uh, on the 23rd, Sunday, November 23rd, at the lunch hour. You get one low down here, and there's the other part of the split flow up there. So moving ahead, there's the dinner hour. Look what we've got. Um, that snow, like I was showing you, is going to ride its way up towards the I-70 corridor on the Front Range High Peaks. We might even have some snow there on the south side of Denver. Uh, as well across the Palmer Divide uh, above 6,000 feet. And of course, down in the, the Pikes Peak District, you're probably going to see snow as well above uh, some of those higher peaks. And look at all that precip up there to the north. All right, here we go. This is 5 a.m. on Monday. Now, the low is moving away, but look at this northern branch. It's kind of dragging a cold front down. So you're going to have a brief shot of snow here across the Tetons. Um, now this indicates, so this is probably just after the lunch hour, this does indicate a little bit of teeny tiny snow there on the, uh, on the 24th across maybe the high Uintas. You might have a snow shower cross 
maybe the Wasatch. I'm just not banking on it. And this may drop a teeny tiny bit of snow into the northern mountains of Colorado. In fact, there you go. You can see it happening there late. All right, so here we are. This is 5 a.m. on Tuesday, November 25th. All the action is moving away. It's very dry across the west. Um, here's the lunch hour on Tuesday. There's the dinner hour. Now, here we are at 5 a.m. on Wednesday, November 26th, so the day before Thanksgiving. Um, and we start to see, it looks like, some energy gathering up here in the northern plains. Some of it's starting to drop down on a west-northwest flow at that point. So that's just a harbinger of what's going to be happening down the road. Um, all right, let's look at the, uh, the time height here. I've got it pulled up for Arapaho Basin. So this is the current moment. You move in this direction into the future of about three days. This is a slice through the vertical atmosphere, so all the layers. And where I see the green, that's what I key in on, and that's happening today. That's happening today, this afternoon, tonight, and then it drops off sharply tomorrow morning with drier air coming in. And there's that little teeny tiny wave on the 24th that may come through with a snow shower. But this is where we're going to pick up the bulk of our accumulation, probably two to five inches of accumulation across Arapaho Basin, Loveland, Keystone, Winter Park, Eldora. Those front range high peaks, probably Summit County in that range, two to five. So that's the time height. Here are the pressure surfaces. We've got, these are pressure anomalies. This is Monday. There's our little low moving through and the rest of the flow is up here in the Pacific Northwest. So the second time period, this is Thursday, so this is Thanksgiving. Big drop in pressures out here, lower than normal across the Midwest and the Great Lakes, higher than normal pressures here across the West. Uh, the third time frame is right here, so this is, uh, this is after the dam breaks. So this is on the first. A lot of the action will probably come through the two prior days to this, but you'll, I mean, this is a big drop in pressures, big dip in the jet, area of low pressure, numerous cold fronts will be leading the charge through here, and one of them will be an Arctic front. So you're going to see a couple of rounds of snowfall with this, and this will set things, set a nice rut in the atmosphere once this happens, because that's probably two standard deviations below the 20 year norm. That's a big deal, and then a big high pressure, higher than normal pressures out here across the northeast. Um, here's the jet stream. In fact, this is the day before, um, on Sunday, 1130. Big amplify, ampli amplification up into the, uh, the Pacific Northwest, and then a big drop down, and that's what would support that colder air and that area of low pressure and all that snow. So that's the jet stream level up at about 30,000 feet. That's what you want to see. That's what we've needed. We need that. We've needed it for a long time. Here's total precipitation as if everything fell as rain over the next seven days. So this takes us into next weekend through Sunday of next weekend. And notice at the beginning, it's all directed up here into the Pacific Northwest and the Northern tier. Um, and what I look for, the yellows, that's the break point of about an inch of liquid. That's about a foot of snow. And then you see the dam breaks after Thanksgiving and everything starts to spill down to the south. Here's the southwest vantage point. Same thing, seven days out. You can see uh, everything initially is with that area of low pressure that comes up on the 23rd and then the dam breaks and then everything amplifies after Thanksgiving. Here it comes, boom, drops out. So as far as snowfall, 10 to 1 up here um, across a lot of the west, um, so initially, everything is up to the north in the Pacific Northwest Northern Tier, and then again, dam breaks, everything comes to the south. So deep purple is at least six inches. Bright pink is a foot or more. Anytime you see the whites come out, like right there, that could be two feet. So lots of foot or mores. I see a lot of the bright pinks. That's a really good period. See what happens whenever you drag in colder air? It helps with the efficiency of everything, all the processes in the wintertime. So that's what you were looking for, and it looks like that's what we're going to get. Here's the southwest vantage point, same thing, 10 to 1, through next weekend, seven days out. And look at that, guys, right over the top of the San Juan Mountains. You see the whites come out? That's at least two feet of accumulation. 
Boom, look at that. Significant. Here's my forecast, my official numbers through the 30th, through the end of the day on the 30th. So this is not a lot, 5 to 10 over the, uh, the Wasatch, but at least it's something. Um, that number could trend up. It could trend up. Looking at over a foot for the Tetons, over a foot for a lot of Montana. Uh, Schweitzer at a foot. I mean, look at Whitefish, big mountain up there at 20. Awesome. 4 to 12 up here through Interior, and nice, 10 to 20 up here in the Pacific Northwest, Alieska and Alaska there. Barely anything for California. You're really out of the flow. Um, snowball over a foot coming. Let me zoom in to Colorado because this is a pretty cool forecast here. So grand totals through close of business on 1130. Like I was showing you, there are, you saw some of that white come out. I mean, that's over two feet. Southwestern Colorado is the bullseye here. I've got Wolf Creek at, at over two feet, Silverton at two feet, looking good at Purgatory and Telluride. And if it gets as cold as it looks, we're going to have snow all the way down to the valley floor in the town of Durango. Um, I've got at least a foot here for northern New Mexico. Uh, now, part of what you see here of the Front Range High Peaks of Colorado and the resorts happens on the 23rd. It happens uh, today. So some of that is already spoken for. But then once that Arctic front comes in, if indeed it is Arctic, we're going to add additional accumulation. So the bottom line is these numbers, including the numbers up here in, in Utah, could all go up. They could easily go up. Whenever you add cold air like this, the numbers could easily trend up. All right, in the northeast, one wave, two waves, three waves. And some of this is lake effect. You can see it right there, downwind of Erie and Ontario. Deep purples at least six inches, bright pink would be a couple of feet. Not a ton at the resorts up here, but there's a fair amount coming off the lakes. And, and Mont Tremblant's in pretty good shape. Here are my numbers. <laughs> So through the close of business on 1130, about 9 inches at Tremblant, 8 at J Peak. Those are the biggest numbers on the map. Otherwise, 6 to 7, Sugar Bush, Med River, Stowe, Whiteface, Snow Ridge. Some of that's lake effect for sure. Uh, and then less as you go south, zeros to 3. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this uh, mountain weather update on this Sunday. Got a lot to look forward to as long as we can bring this Arctic front in. That's what's going to change the game. Take care, guys, and have a great day.